So the senior Rotax heat to the final heat of the day before we go into lunch, which I've just been told is uh, 20 minutes instead of 30 minutes. It's got pole position, the number 81, Ben Folland, and the 45 of Lucas Ellingham alongside him. Row two, the 124 of Charlie Webb and the 14 of Jack Cooper. The row three, 166 of Jack Gillingham and 43 of Stefan Kasmacek. Row four, 88, Alex Moody and the 33 of Leo Brown. Row 5, 39, Brandon Klein, Nagelvoort, hoping to have better engine issues, uh, no engine issues compared to race 1. 37, Ben Ballou, and row 6, 55, Ethan Martin, and 16, George Donald. Row 7, 31, Sam Baker, and 44, Ross Tyler. Row 8, 101, Archie Buttle, and, row third, and number 13, Zaki Hussein. Row 9, 67, Louis Weaver, and uh, 66, Samuel Cook. Row 10, 12, Jack Collins, and 96, William Pemble. Row 11, 157 of Finley Hayes and 27, James Tester. Row 12, 175 of Harrison Morrow and 144 of someone. Row 13, 171, Stephanie Hobeka and 15 of Benjamin Southgate. Row 14 is 87, Mac McFarquhar and 158 of Jack Wilch. Row 15 is 113 of Joe Fox and 77, Romarian Ubi. And row 16, 74, Asa Pinda and 112 of Jack Richards. Row 70, 114 of Paolo Nunez Aranda and 22, Lorenzo Cordal. It doesn't matter, even if you do have a stinker in one of the heats and you get a bad grid position, it's still all to play for in the WM Plate Final later on this afternoon. So let's see, as these drivers come out for their first time in these rather slippery conditions, how they are able to deal with it. Of course, we've just seen the Senior X30s out. They dealt with it pretty well. Let's see if the Rotaxes can do just the same as well. Yeah, of course, when they, these guys were last out, it was just... It's just icy, wasn't it? Well, not even icy. It was, it was just a bit cold, sort of cold just really. Cold. Uh, difficult to warm the tyres up, whereas now it's going to be difficult to warm the tyres up and difficult to actually uh, decide what the fastest line is. Um, yeah, the lunch break, as I just mentioned, is 20 minutes and not 30 minutes. So we should obviously get this race done by about 25 past, and then it's going to be 20 minutes from there. So I would guess maybe a quarter to, um, quarter to uh, two, potentially we might be back. If you're tuning in, Come back at quarter two and you'll probably be good for the first race at Junior Max Final. But of course, you've got a good eight minute race to go before that. Of uh, course, but between that as well during the lunch, we will have a waiting screen. And when we know the time that we're coming back, yes, a timer countdown. will appear on that as well. So yeah. you'll be able to check on the screen. No see, paddock show though today. No paddock show, Sally. You won't be able to see our beautiful faces. Probably, probably luckily, to be honest. Right, let's get this underway then. Senior Max Heat number two is already underway. And can the drivers keep it on the, on the black stuff? No, they cannot. Some taking to the grass. All managing to join without taking someone else out, though. Impressive stuff. Yeah, the advantage of under understeering is the fact that you're not going to get anybody flying on the inside accidentally. Oh, oh Christmas corner, too much, too late. Uh, one, two, four, Charlie Webb and Lucas Allingham. It is. Again, Lucas Allingham is just in the wars, isn't he? Um, a race one to forget. He had a half decent recovery, but he had contact. Oh. And there's more people flying off on the edge Watch of the out circuit for our camera. now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Darren in the director's box is thinking, oh, gosh, it's going to be an expensive day. Um, we'll be invoicing you. Uh, we'll be invoicing, yeah, exactly. We'll be doing the old Jonathan Palmer, won't we, instead? Invoicing you for every blade of grassy touch. Um, but it looks like everybody's managed to get through, and there is no Battenberg. It's quite a lot of Battenbergs in Heat 1, but surprisingly, no, not really many Battenbergs in Heat 2, has there, considering no. the weather has changed? Yeah, no, exactly. Um, I don't even know a reasoning behind that, to be fair, no. but we've just been quite lucky through these second heats, so there haven't been too many. What a first lap from Ben Folland, a 1 minute 0.53. Everyone else is in the lowest of the 1 minute 2s, and he's already got a 2.6 sec, 2 second lead. This is amazing. It's fantastic, isn't it? For him, anyway. Not so yeah, great yeah, for the rest, of the, uh, rest of the track. Nagelvoort. Now, there is a storyline. Yeah, um, he is hard. in second place, up from ninth. And remember, he was rapid in race one. Then engine died. Yes. His engine just completely stopped just on, gave him, up really, on didn't it, didn't it? And... Uh, He's going to be hoping that that doesn't happen again. This oh, is going to be some understeer, surely, here on the inside. No, they managed to all get themselves stopped. I was fearful that that was going to end up a lot worse. And it did a little bit of sideways, a little bit of movement as they come back onto the circuit. The number 14 is sort of hung out to dry slightly as the 27 gets James bumped Tester. big time out of the way. Uh, as William Pemble goes through, the number 96, I think, was there. Oh, tell you what, the speed off the corner there. <laughs> that That's was James the outside Tester again. line. Yeah, Tester. From that outside, just absolutely flooring it and lovely bit of pace off the corner. Um, but it's so difficult out there to retain the position. Indeed it is. Fastest lap goes back the way of Brandon Klein-Nagelvoort, though. 
that 2.6 second gap now 2.4 so slowly but surely close to that gap still got just less than five minutes to go in this race so still definitely time to have a leading battle on our hands as the 16 of George Donald thinking about a move on Alex Moody there for seventh place up at Christmas corner late on the brakes of James Tester and he is going to go in the back of the car in front and he is going to spin James Tester goes for a spin up at Christmas corner went into the back of the 96 of William Pemble and James Tester sadly is going to be dropping down the order after that one it's a shame isn't it but you always got the impression that there's going to be some kind of contact in that little battle a little bit too close for comfort there's too many people trying to go to too many different opportunities and it's so hard to read everybody when you're in these conditions and especially if there's four or five carts around you it just there was always going to be something to give wasn't there unfortunately uh, the 16 and the 166 is something quite satisfying about that uh, but that's george donald versus jack gillingham um the fight for i'll tell you in a second is it the fifth place fight I'm not entirely sure because the, uh, the, the, <laughs> the timing screen is decided to break. There, there we go. go. No, Lucas Ellingham up to fifth place. That's yep. a contact at, um, at Christmas Corner, doing what he does best and going quickly. Yeah, exactly. He's leading this trade of four at the moment on the number 45 is Lucas Ellingham. Bit of a gap forward to Benjamin Ballou in fourth place, though a good couple of seconds. So he's going to do his best to clear these three battling in behind him. Well, what a battle it is. Someone else now going down the inside of Jack Gillingham. I think that might be Alex Moody taking his... Uh, Taking that spot away from Jack Gillingham, going up into seventh place. Yeah, Lucas Ellingham, after that earlier uh, unluckiness, I guess we can call it, getting involved in that yeah. squabble on the first lap. He's fighting back through the pack very well, just as he did in heat number one. He dropped all the way down to pretty much last place in heat one, didn't he, after that uh, early lap crash. Himself and someone else going straight on at Oblivion. He fought back up to 16th. So, damage limitation, he did that very well. Now, in this race, he needs to get a good result to try and maximise his starting position for the WM Plate Final happening later on this afternoon. But Ben Folland continues to extend that gap ever so slightly out front. Fastest lap, now 59.670 for Ben. He's flying, isn't he? He was a qualified on pole position. I believe in the first race, um, he was also pretty much the first driver of the day that qualified on pole and pretty much didn't have to worry too much about anything. He yep. just drove the race and won. And in this, he's also basically done that. But Lucas Ellingham, on the other hand, has been just done dirty hasn't he really it's uh like i said in the in the previous race i'd rather start well obviously i'd rather start first but i'd rather start third or fifth or even seventh than second uh fourth or sixth to be honest and be Sorry. on the outside line so you can get the power down early and get the better start get into the first couple of corners uh, you can probably jump three people before you've even got to the start finish line if you're on the outside here so it's um yeah very difficult if you if you qualified on second place you've done very well but you almost get punished for it yeah, exactly. And you also have the issue of you're on the inside as you come through the last corner. As you say, difficult to get the power down. But then coming through the first corner, you're then on the outside. Yeah. So everyone that understeers, understeers into you and knocks you off the circuit. That's exactly what happened to Lucas Ellingham in that first heat of the day. It was indeed. And uh, we're starting to see a little bit more battling, though. Start to bubble up with the 13 cart, uh, which is the fight. For, where is the 13 cart? Zaki Hussein in 16th position versus, I think it's Romaria Ubi in the 77. There's the 39, though, of Brandon Klein Nagelvoort. Is he catching? He has just set a fastest lap of the race. It's a tenth it's and a half quicker than... Sort of stayed the same, I think, the last couple yeah, of laps. He has just got a tenth quicker than Ben Folland, but... They're sort of trading, aren't they, the top yeah, three? It's not really worth sort of noting just yet. Let's not get excited for the last minute just yet. Um, if he keeps attacking curbs like that, I think... Uh, what your point? Uh, I'm just impressed with how much Sam Baker closed in on that last lap. Oh, true. That gap was two wow. seconds, and it's now less than eight tenths of a second. He closed in by, what's that, seven, eight tenths? Yep, and a fastest lap to boot. 59.20. Look at that. Very, very quick indeed. That is quicker than Nagelvort's fastest lap by three tenths of a second. Impressive um, stuff. So, yeah, Ooh, very, very Nagelvort's good. gone wide off of that right-hander there through Boxing Day. That could give an opportunity to Sam Baker here, but the timer ticking below 30 seconds. I think we'll likely get two laps left here. Opportunistic from uh, from Sam Baker, but the door closes once more. He's going to have to rethink that one if he wants to take second place. I think they could both assume that Ben Folland is gone here. What a perfect day it's been so far for Ben Folland. And he should. This is going to be close here to whether we get one or two more laps. I think it will just be two more laps yes it is so penultimate lap of the race then for ben folland there is a yellow flag going through the first sector of corners is someone off out of shot yes they are there they're rejoining on their fernando alonso cart 
not sure exactly who that was, but good to see them rejoin the race nonetheless. Yeah, we'll probably want to get out of the way because they're a yeah. backmarker, aren't they? And they're right in the way. And in fact, they made a little bit of contact there. That's Finley Hayes just getting back on after that incident and luckily managing to keep out of the way. But definitely Sam Baker's lost a bit of time to all that. Yeah, just look how much they go into the corner and they just throw the car in. And look, they lock their arms, don't they, to try and make sure they want the car at full lock. And it's the strongest position they can put themselves in. If you look going through this corner, it's a really good example. Look, they lean over the car. The That's rear left tyre came completely off the ground. Exactly. They, they, they're leaning their way over the car to try and get as much weight and as much grip onto the uh, front right and front uh, and the rear right as possible. And also, it's the strongest position to keep your arm locked at that understeer position, isn't it? Because you want it at pretty much as full lock as you can. You'll never see them turn the wheel that much in dry conditions. Never. Um, no, they, they barely um, put any steering in place no. or the, the back end just slides out it's completely. It's incredible. The, the, the difference that the weather can make with these tyres, again, it's a completely different driving style. It's a completely different kettle of fish. As I said, it, it's, it's pretty incredible, really. And Even under braking down, I'm impressed that they're not locking and having to slide it completely. We see quite a lot of people locking and sliding, but in the wet tyres, you don't want that because you just scrub the tyres and you end up with a bit of a 50 pence piece almost. <laughs> and it's yes. vibrations so are just really annoying. In the wet tyres, you don't want to scrub any um, tread off them at all because they're wet. You want the tread. That's the point of them. Yes. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. Now, Sam Baker was flying earlier on, but uh, but uh, Brandon klein Nagelvoort has done a brilliant job over these last couple of laps just managing the gap on that 39-plated cart. Just ahead of them, though, what a race from Ben Folland. Two wins from two. He'll be starting the final on pole position later on today. The 81 of Ben Folland takes another deserved win here at the Wilton Mill Kart Club WM plate for 2023. Brandon Clyde Nagavor and Sam Baker round out the podium in that second heat of the day for the senior road taxes. And here we see the rest of the field. Now, slowly but surely, come across the line. Some good battles there in the mid pack. There's Benjamin Ballou, who came across in fourth place, and George Donald, Louis Weaver, Lucas Ellingham finishing in seventh place so i think another issue there because he was three seconds behind fifth and he was in fifth last time we checked in on him wasn't he so maybe another issue there for lucas ellingham either way finishing seventh not bad but he's going to have his work cut out for him in the final later on alex moody ethan martin and lorenzo cordal rounded out the top 10 behind them were benjamin southgate jack Gillingham. William Pebble, Zaki Hussain, Charlie Webb, James Tester, Archie Bustle, Jake Richards, Stefan Kaczmaschik and Harry Bloor round out the top 20. Then Romario and Ubi, Jack Collins, Jack Cooper, Paolo Nunes Aranda, Leo Brown, Harrison Morrow and Jack Wilch come across the line. Jack being your top novice from today. Then it was Ross Tyler, Asa Pinder, Stephanie Herbecker, Mac McFarquhar and then Finley Hayes. And sadly, Joe Fox didn't make it to the finish line.